and you know, a chaste woman. And now she's pregnant, she's had a baby, and she has nothing to prove her, that she's innocent, or that she's, she's not an adulteress. She has nothing, nothing at all to prove except her word. Nobody else even knows. If they know, it's only through her. Nobody knows independently that can, they can corroborate and say, yes, I have evidence, or I saw, or I, I witnessed the angel come and tell me. None, none of that. Nobody knows except for her. And here she's, she's given birth, and of course everyone's going to say, they, they, they're, they're completely justified in saying that she's, she's done something indecent, and that's why she's had this child out of wedlock. So really, um, the gravity of that situation really overcomes her, and she, she wishes she was dead. She wishes that she wasn't in the situation, that she was dead and forgotten. When this happens, a voice comes from the baby himself. He's just been born, and Isa Alayhi Salaam talks to him and says, Don't worry, don't fret. He tells her that um, Allah, who's been so kind to you all throughout, He's provided food and drink for you right now. He tells her that... Uh, a stream has been, has, has, is being created for you at your feet, and a stream starts gushing forth, and she can drink from that. He tells her to, to kind of shake this, this dead trunk of a, of a date palm, and when she does that, the, the, the palm um, springs to life, puts out leaves, it has fresh, fresh ripe dates on it, and it actually drops the dates down on her so that she can eat from that. <coughs> and through that, uh, by, 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 by giving her this blessing, he really reminds her of, of God's continuous blessings on her, even from before she was born until now. So that, that puts her at ease. And then he tells her that you do have to go back, you have to go back and, and take me to, to um, Jerusalem. But all you, have, you don't have to do anything else. Right? I'm going to take care of it from there. It's true, you have no way to prove that you're a chaste woman, that you, you maintain your chastity. But I can prove that. So all you have to do is, is take a vow of silence. Don't say anything. Let people know that you, you can't say anything. And leave it up to me. And I'll take care of it. Okay, that's, that's about as far as we'll be able to get today. And then um, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when they actually go back into Jerusalem. So let's go through these verses and, and um, I'll, I'll give you some more detail about the, the verses themselves. Okay, so this is right in the middle of um, of the conversation between the angels and Maryam Anissa. This whole group of angels has come in, and this is one of the things that they tell her. This is in Surah Ali Imran, verse number forty-six. Wa yukallimu nasa fil Mahdi wa kahlan wa min al-salihin, and he will speak to the people while in the cradle, and as an adult, just the same, and he will be among the righteous. Now, speaking from the cradle, or first of all, a cradle doesn't necessarily mean a, a, like a wooden cradle, a little rock, rocking cradle, the cute things you can buy in a, in a, a store now. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It seems, actually, like um, when she comes back, I mean, he, he's in her arms. Right? I, I doubt they had strollers, I doubt they had you know, these sorts of you know, gadgets and things, especially at her state. She, was, um, she had basically gone out with a shirt on her back, literally, um, to, to deliver the child. And he was at most wrapped in some, some blankets or something like that, if, if that. Um, so, meh doesn't necessarily mean a, a cradle. It means any, any kind of, any place, like a, a bedding that you would lay out for a child to sleep on or that you would wrap it in, a, a swaddling cloth and all sorts of things. Speaking from the, the meh, speaking from the cradle, that's miraculous, definitely. Uh, we have evidence um, for um, at least two instances where Isa uh, speaks as a child. Right, one is what I just mentioned. As soon as he's born, his mother is, is worried about her situation, and he speaks to her to comfort her. Right, so that's one of the instances where you kill him nasa min al fil mahd. Another instance is what we'll see when he comes, when the two of them come back to Jerusalem, and the people are all accusing his mother. Then he says, "Inni Abdullah atani atani." He speaks to them, and he he, he uh, claim makes his claim for who he is, and he's a prophet, and he. Let's, let's everyone know that he's righteous, his mother is righteous, and this is all a miracle of God. And so those are two instances where he speaks from the cradle, and we'll see those in detail later on in the show. You might wonder, why does Allah mention kahl? A kahl is uh, an adult. Right? Somebody who's in his prime. 
after after you're a shab, like they have in Arabic they have different names for the different stages of life. You're called different things as you progress through life. We have the same sorts of things, right? Like infant and a, a toddler and a I don't know, a teenager and, and so forth. We have different names for different stages. They have the same sorts of things. So Kahal is somebody who is um, past his um, his his youth. He's no longer a, a, a young man. He's kind of he's in his prime. And some of the lexicographers say that it literally, um, specifically indicates um, the age of 34 and up to 40. Okay. So in the prime, someone in the prime of his life, he's as strong as he's going to be. Um, has all of his all of his abilities are kind of um, have they, he's achieved the actuality of all his potential. That's someone who's strong. And why would Allah mention mention this to speak as an adult? There's nothing unusual about that. All of us speak as adults. So it doesn't seem very miraculous. And why, why would you have to mention this? There are two reasons why the commentaries, commentators think that he's, um, he's mentioned the kahl part, that he'll speak as an adult. One is to give additional uh, comfort to Maryam. Because by telling her that Isa Isa not only will speak from the grave, but it also speak, uh, speak as an adult, proves or uh, indicates to her by, by corollary that he's going to live to adulthood. And that in itself is a, is a source of comfort for a parent to know, if you, if you could know that you know, your child is going to live to 35 years old, 34 years old, that in itself is some, some comfort to the parent. Right? Whereas if you have this uncertainty, you don't know if he's really going to survive very long, then, then you, you, feel, you feel a sense of worry. So possibly that's, that's the reason that he mentions that he'll speak not only as a child but as an adult, to guarantee, to promise her, it's a promise to her that he'll live to adulthood. The problem with this is that, at least according to the, the biblical account of, of Jesus, he was, he, according to their account, he was, he was crucified at 33. And so he didn't make it to, to Kuhula, to, to the age of being a Kahal. So for them, it, that, that's a problem. For us, it's, 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 uh, we can still solve it. Even if that's the right interpretation for why he's included Kahal, we can still justify it because we know that his life isn't end, hasn't ended yet. Even if, he, even if we accept that he only lived here to, uh, uh, for 33 years and then he was lifted up, not crucified, but lifted up, we do know that he's going to come back. He's going to continue his life. He, his, his life is kind of on hold right now. And he'll be returned to earth and he'll continue his life. And then he'll, he'll live to old age then. So possibly that's, it's, a, it's a prophecy for that. That Isa al Islam isn't going to die at 33 years old, but rather he's going to live to, to be a kahal. And if he hasn't lived to be a kahal yet, then he'll definitely come back later on and, and live to that age. That's one possibility. Maybe a better possibility is the second one. This Allah gives uh, this preference. Some of the other commentators I looked at as well. He mentions Kahl more to emphasize how Isa is going to talk from the cradle. What I mean is this, that you can imagine a child speaking in a very childish way. Sometimes you have you have kids who'll speak you know in their first year they'll start saying words and exceptional exceptional kids, right? It's not a miracle necessarily. It's, it's unusual. Maybe they're a little bit advanced in their in their vocal skills and the linguistic skills, but it's not necessarily a miracle. But you would never have you would never expect a child under normal circumstances, even if they do speak in their first year, right? You would never expect them to speak intelligently like an adult. So by saying this, saying you Mahdi wa kahlan, in reality he's saying he's going to speak to people from the cradle just as he will speak to speak to them as an adult, right? So just as you expect him to speak as an adult, eloquently, beautifully, full of meaning, full of wisdom, he's going to speak from the cradle just like that. Yeah, that's why I've translated I, in brackets. I put just the same, try to indicate that, and he will speak to the people while in the cradle and as an adult, just the same. Right? There'll be no difference between how he speaks as a child and as an adult. Again, like, like I mentioned, whatever's in brackets,